Look at the ERP, and it doesn't really matter for me which ERP. I believe that most ERP vendors do not make left-handed screwdrivers. You make a product for the market. Everybody seems to be going wall-to-wall -wall ERP, sorry, AI. But one, and I'm asking a, a genuine question here. Does anybody know any organization that uses their current ERP to its full potential today? That said, and I think I know the answer, I think AI will help to use, to use that functionality that is not available or not being used today. That's a good point. Um, does anybody else have a different view or do they agree? I mean, definitely ERP is not uh, huge. I, I, mean, I, I think I agree, sort of. You, know, you should never say never, but um, you know, I, I don't even think it's uh, the, the right question. Is that you know? Is that you know? And AI until this point has um, showed great promise in very narrow um, assisted kind of applications, and not so much for this holistic overview of an entire technology stack. Is that you know? ERP is a beast. It's you know. It's your finance system. It's your bill of material explosion. It's your invoicing system. All of that is more than the current state of AI is really, um, you know, the, the people are trying to do. I, I do agree. I, I think that's a great point earlier that no one fully is getting everything that their ERP solution could do as we apply tools like AI to individual functions. I think there was great promise for that. Yeah, I, you know, I, I agree, Glenn. And, and probably what I would say is, you know, to me, it, it, a, a lot of a lot of people right now in the market are talking about ERP as, you know, like ERP and AI as two separate things. The the, the way that I look at it is, look, the, the ERP is is the foundation, right? It's how you're going to get your data in place, your workflows in place, and your business. So I think the answer is, will they go away? No, I don't think it'll ever go away. I think it'll change, uh, and I think AI will be part of a tool, right, within within the ERP and embedded within the workflows of the business, which I think that's how AI can be successful, right? Is, is being embedded. Yeah. I think, I think we extrapolate on that, on the question, right? So, so I think we're all agreeing that AI is not going to replace like the stack. It's not going to replace overall um, some of the nuances that are going to be within ERP systems. But when you actually bring in Gen AI, how do you see that coming in and, and do you see it leveraging existing systems being part of like the agent driven economy that could be coming through with, with some of the stuff that's coming out with Gen AI? I'm going to be the contrarian here. And I believe that when the compute power gets to, to the right inflection point, the majority of the, of the code stack in a lot of ERPs will become redundant purely by virtue of the, the process, sheer processing power. I fully agree with the, the comments. Right now, the, the verticalization of, of Gen AI specific to individual use cases as um, the technology is very nascent, right? Mm -hmm. But when the compute power gets to a certain point, it, in its simplest form, an ERP is, is a pilot data with some business logic on top and a UI. I'm being very simplistic now. But when that compute power it, it reaches parity, <laughs> a lot of the, the majority of the processes that ERP does today are standard they've been around 30 40 plus years and they haven't materially changed in, in the highest form i actually think a, a, a lot of pressure is going to come on on the ERP vendors to um make their, their stacks more composable and more agile than the monolithic structures we see today yeah if i can jump in as well i i agree i think that the ai is definitely going to um accelerate and automate a lot of the workflows that exist today, you know, uh, for sure that the access to uh, Gen AI and things like natural language processing, those types of capabilities, you know, combined with the computing power is going to allow us to analyze the vast amount of data that exists inside of the ERPs and in the businesses to be able to um, predict and, and take action in a more automated way and intelligent way going forward. But the foundations of the different capabilities of the ERP still exists. It's just going to look different, maybe vastly different 10 years from now from what we know it today, but there's still going to be a part of 
you know, the system that's going to do the inventory decisioning, a part of the system that's going to do the financial decisioning. A lot of it is going to be decisions that are potentially made automatically. And the role of the ERP operator is going to be more of, you know, uh, handling the exceptions. Uh, the workflows will be more automated. They're going to be based on data and expertise uh, that the system has been trained on. But then there's still going to be a role for, you know, people having to engage with it and and solve for exceptions. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think on that, right? So let's dig into that. And so there's a lot of companies that are coming out and there's a lot of startups that are coming out that are driving individual items in the same field. They're using AI and Gen AI to drive some of this. So I guess the question here for ERP wise is, when do you think it's all going to be combined? When do you think that some of these startups that are coming in and, and doing one side of this or another side of this and, and building like these niche opportunities, when are they coming in? When is that going to be a part of the whole enterprise or the whole ERP aspect? So if I could jump in there, um, it looks like today, in my view, it's very Wild West. Uh, everyone thinks of the California gold rush. They're, everyone's going to make millions, right? Everyone's got a uh, shovel, not, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and everybody's running to that, that hill, right? Where it comes from maturity for me, You've got, let's, well, let's just call it, uh, Microsoft have got, they basically own the productivity suite that most corporates use. They're going to wall to wall AI with their co pilot. And the smart ERP vendors, which I think all of them are, you know, the, some of them are better at other things, at, at certain things right now. Others are better at other things, but they all kind of catch up and they level the play, playing field to a certain degree. Whoever can manipulate that handshake between the productivity suite, your your office suite, and your ERP, and get that whole flow running end to end, you start manipulating the data. Now, if if I could just jump back a tiny little piece, I I used to have a saying. I still kind of like it. I think if any of us started using Office ninety seven, uh, nineteen ninety seven, today, until the day we leave this planet we would not use all the functionality within the office suite. Now, you you extrapolate that out to an ERP system. I'm not talking about Office, uh, you know, 365 or whatever with all this new functionality. I'm talking about an office suite that's, well, 30 years old nearly, 25 years old. Uh, right. So the functionality that's in any and every ERP system, if you can get you, you your office worker your your yeah. intelligent but worker, ease, your ease of use, right? Yeah, if you can bring yep. the ease of use to the user, they're going to be able to drive it and actually be more enabled to to, to pick it up and run with it, right? Yeah. yeah, and then and then bring that the whole way right through seamlessly into the ERP, so that people can manipulate the data, the processes, and you then you've got a shot at the. I don't want to use the SAP here, but the in the, in the intelligent enterprise. Yeah, um, exactly. I mean, Arturo, did you have something there? Yeah. No, I was going to add, I think, you know, um, with generative AI specifically, large language models, I think in, from a UX perspective, because I think that's where Paul was headed, right? It's like, right. Ease of use. I think it's, it's, we're going to live, we're living through the moment, but it's going to be, especially in the next two to three years, uh, similar to the introduction of the touch screen, uh, and the iPhone, how it changed technology. I think ERP is going to change in that way. Um, and I think in, in many ways, it's the companies that don't, right, make that change successfully, then yeah, they're going to have trouble, um, uh, what, you know, launching those things and, and actually like expanding in, in the market. Um, and then conversely on, on like the, the customer side is the customers or, you know, manufacturers or, um, you know, I, I have some bias because, because of my, all, all of our users are, are, are manufacturing, but um, the, the companies that, that are ready for that revolution, meaning, right, you have an ERP installed, you have your, your data in order, um, that, and those are the kinds of things that AI is going to need in order to unlock all that value. Right. Yeah. Yep. If yep. I can, oh, yeah, I, I agree with Arturo and I think something you said at the end, which is if you have your data in order and your ERP in order. Um, my perspective is from uh, small, medium-sized businesses, which is our core 
constituency at ECI. And um, it is a journey for them. So all of the things that Paul or Trevor talked about will come to fruition. We're going to see more streamlined touchscreen, you know, analogy of, of the UI. But with the SMB customers, it's a little bit longer journey. First, we have to kind of make sure their data is in order, make sure that they see the value of data and that, you know, that data is quality enough that you can use it as a basis for AI, because otherwise it's going to be garbage in, garbage out from a decision-making process perspective. So um, that's why there's a little bit of a longer kind of a hand-holding period, if you will, with smaller companies to be able to show them, demonstrate them the value of data, the value of analytics, and ultimately AI is going to be the capstone that you put on top of that. Yeah. Right. One, of things, uh, one of the things I worry about with data, and I'm a clean data guy. I mean, nobody wants dirty data, right? Um, but particularly the small and medium folks, uh, I worry about whether the data really promotes best practices is that every ERP comp user that you go to will say, oh, I got 30 years worth of data. But is it the right data, even if clean, mm -hmm. is that no one would say that they should be basing their forecast best based on the last five years worth of data because the world has been turned upside down. And so they have 30 years worth of very closed, very intellectual property kind of data. I think it's the onus will be on suppliers like ERP um, firms to provide best practices training for some of this AI as it's delivered because um, they don't, you know, if you ask chat GBT or open AI, um, I'm going to take away all of the information about modern art. Will you ever get to Picasso? And the answer is no, is that it'll right. say, no, I'll never get there. Is that because with just that, that very contained set of data that's flawed in some ways, their processes have been flawed. You cannot base a future state of preference on the flawed data. 